fellow speakers and visionaries, dear Asfa and the Nutshell team, beautiful souls, salam alaikum. Thank you for gracing this important and noble event with your presence. It's truly an honor to stand. Can you hear me? Is that okay? Yes. It's truly an honor to stand before you and share my thoughts on a matter that transcends boundaries and speaks to the core of our very existence. I came here to delve deeper into the profound theme of peace and our collective journey towards it. I came here to call for peace in our time. I invite all of you for just one moment to close your eyes and with your hands on your heart, take a deep breath and just feel a moment's gratitude for this gift of your life and give thanks. I believe that peace in our time is possible. Peace, although an elusive concept in a world rife with conflict, is the cornerstone of our shared aspirations. As I stand here before you, I echo a universal yearning, a des desire for peace that will transcend borders, ideologies, corporate and personal ambitions. The question is simple yet profound. Who in this room does not wish for peace? Beyond a mere wish, I believe in our collective power to transform this desire into a reality, a thriving, sustainable world where genuine harmony resides in the hearts and minds of all for our children and our grandchildren's future. For the 65%, for the as we've been hearing, of the upcoming population of Pakistan's youth and their future. Acknowledging the immense hurdles and intense challenges that we face is crucial because we find ourselves at a formidable crossroads. Brought about by our ignorance and aversion to rightful responsibility. To effectively move forward, we must confront the fact that peace only seems elusive because we're missing a vital piece of the puzzle. The missing piece is referred to in ancient texts and scriptures, but has been concealed, fragmented, misrepresented, and even vilified throughout history. The consequence of this omission is a world perpetually entrenched in war, destruction, species annihilation, and almost demonic-driven pursuit of power that threatens our very existence. Our, te our technological prowess has propelled us into a prosperous new era, but has outpaced our conscious evolution. Despite the abundance of information, ideas, theories, and theologies, the actualization and implementation of our true potential as conscious human beings remains elusive. This disparity continues to lead us down perilous paths, akin to the musk deer, searching for the source of its own fragrance, unaware that it emanates from within thus driving itself mad and eventually killing itself in despair and frustration. It's my firm belief that the missing piece, this sacred hidden knowledge, has never before been made to humanity as a whole. Its revelation explains why, despite our proud technological advancements, we still live in a world insatiably consumed by lust and greed obsessively obscured by money in a version of reality largely devoid of any real connection and consciousness. This vital missing piece is the quantum key to awaken our latent 
genius, unlock our true potential, fulfill our higher purpose, and bring us home to peace. The urgency of this missing piece is starkly apparent when we consider the trajectory of our world as we witness nations beset with conflict, individuals briguette with trauma, and societies weighed with issues. The lack of this missing piece has left us chasing our tails, unable to evolve consciously and recognize who we truly are and why we're here for millions of years. Why? The first major hurdle is that peace is not prioritized. The growth of profit is. Only a small but powerful minority profits from war, illness, trauma, and fear. Did they sell us that the pursuit of money over the pursuit of peace is more rewarding? I want to show you that peace and profit are not mutually exclusive. In fact, on the contrary, we can, proc we can procure both when we prioritize peace. To do that, I believe we must grow up beyond selfishness and service to the few and implement peace as a strategy in service to all as a matter of corporate responsibility, social sustainability, and inclusive empowerment. The extent of the peace crisis is profound, extending far beyond geopolitical, or geopolitical sorry, conflicts. By the end of 2022, 32 countries were at war. With the current massacre in Palestine, that number continues to rise. Domestic violence accounted for nearly 25% of divorces. The spectre of mental, serious mental health issues loom over at least half the global population. And did you know that homicide is the second cause, second highest cause of death for 15 to 29 year olds, with the third most highest cause of death being suicide? with at least 10% of our kids and our youth self-harming. Do we want that for Pakistan's young people of 2047? Their loss of hope for a right to their future is unspeakably devastating. And what of the 100,000 children or so that go missing every year? It's no wonder that we have trouble sleeping at night. The statistics, although staggering, fail to capture the full impact. Trauma, both diagnosed and undiagnosed, is spreading like wildfire, affecting individuals and entire communities globally. Unresolved trauma is also inherited through familiar ancestral lines, cultural tragedy and history, and passed down the generations like a baton in a relay race a heavy burden that we must collectively address. Trauma breeds fear, codependency, disempowerment, loss of purpose, and infernal internal struggles that all too often remain hidden. How many people these days are battling demons inside themselves that no one else knows about for fear of what other people will think of them or do to them if they knew. How many of us have experienced some sort of trauma in our lifetime? I would say almost everyone in this room, if we're honest. How could we not be traumatized when there are billions of us suffering, being trafficked, slaughtered, living in refugee camps and slums, hiding from terrorist groups, sick, starving, poor, and without hope. And instead of the trauma lessening over time as the anecdote, anti anecdote excuse me, time heals, tells us, what we must realize is that despite the financial growth and availability of technology, actually the trauma is increasing. We live in a traumatized world full of traumatized people. An unhealed trauma is the real global pandemic. Let's visualize the pervasive impact of trauma. Imagine the Earth as a body and its inhabitants 
as cells. How much of the earth is covered with people fighting, struggling and suffering, visibly and invisibly? If we were to represent traumatized individuals as malignant cells in a body, how much of the body would be cancerous? And how do we hope to thrive and do better and evolve with our technology and AI and planetary sustainability when the real state of the world, this is the big picture, is that level of trauma? At the end of the day, you won't care how much profit you made as you lie on your deathbed, gasping for your last breath. But you will care about how much peace you are in when you go. And how much peace you established in this world and in your communities. We need to be in peace first. You need to be in peace first to make the difference that you came here to make. In the face of such overwhelming decimation, the missing piece emerges as the solution, a solution embedded in the profound energy of love. Love, the energy that permeates all of creation in the form of supreme consciousness, is the bedrock of peace. Now consider the power of love in your own lives, the love for your children, your parents, siblings, the love you have for your work, the love you have for your country, the love you have for your higher power or God. What power does love inspire and motivate in you? What wouldn't you do for the people you love? For me, it's my children. I'd do anything for my children. Who or what makes you feel that way? Is it not love that is the greatest force you have, catapulting you to previously unimagined stratospheric possibilities, potential and achievement? Love motivates and propels us to achieve the seemingly impossible, pushing us beyond our fears, our blocks, and our limitations. Underneath all motivations, money, power, status, lies a deep-seated desire for love and connection. Understand that success in its truest form is driven by a desire for acknowledgement, validation, and ultimately love. As leaders, pioneers, people of influence, people of power, recognizing this truth is paramount. You wish for people to know who you are. You long to be seen for what you're made of and what you're capable of. You yearn to be heard your story told and your message communicated. You ache to feel valuable so you can contribute. You pine to feel significant so that you belong. You seek to feel validated so that you matter. You need to feel worthy that you deserve peace and happiness, albeit sometimes secretly or covertly. And underneath all of that and all of your motivations, you want to be loved without judgment, separation or condition for just being yourself. But where do you find that kind of love? Who can give you that? It's a lack of love that has traumatized and twisted our perceptions and led us astray. It's a lack of love that drove us in the wrong direction in a distorted pursuit of power propelled by our own wounded aspects simply seeking validation, acceptance and inclusion. War, as it exists in our external world, finds its roots within the minds and souls of human beings as a severe lack of love. The pursuit of power 
and the perpetuation of destructive behaviors are manifestations of our collective internal strife. To envision a sustainable peace, we must look deeper than external solutions. We must look to our individual inner environment. We need to change things from the inside out by addressing the root core level to become self-responsible, self-sustainable, and self-loving human beings. With the knowledge and tools to resolve our own internal trauma, inner conflict, and the war within us. And it's us, as leaders, pioneers, and experts, who have the responsibility and the duty and the power to make the biggest impact for change. Because we are the fortunate ones to be sitting here right now, safe, not bombed from our homes, fed, clothed, educated, and caring enough to be able to make that difference that will turn this world around. It's my mission to make this missing piece available on a global scale. And as you might imagine, I've encountered challenges. For those who prioritize self-service over serving others, or power over others instead of empowering others, and those addicted to suffering and addicted to inflicting suffering, this message is instantly dismissed. However, for those of us here in this room who recognize the urgent and obvious need for a new foundation of pure and unconditional love in our world, this message resonates. The missing piece is not an abstract abstract concept. It's the bridge between science and spirituality, between our human condition and our divine potential. It's where unconscious minds and conscious hearts unite, where trauma is healed and darkness yields to light. It is universal quantum mechanic principles. It's free technology. It's the missing piece in your CSRs and your SDGs. It's unconditional love. So I ask, when would you be willing to love yourselves enough to be the love that you seek from the world? In my efforts to facilitate people for self-sustainable peace, higher consciousness, well-being and love, I teach seven quantum keys. To save time, because I'm running out, uh, actually, I'm not gonna, no, I'll share the brief version. Key one is the most crucial, and it's the key to self-realization. And I help people access this with a very unique and very quick, effective breathing technique connected with inner sensory perception. Key five is the key to evolution. The key recalibrates and repatterns the energy waves and particles of your matter, your beliefs, your emotions, and soul memory into a healed and harmonious frequency. Key six is the key to self actualization, where it locks in that repatterned harmony as the new baseline of your reality. And it's very important for actualizing the wealth of your potential and increasing your manifestations, your goals, your desires. 30 years of research from the HeartMath Institute proves a scientific perspective on the power of love. Did you know that the energetic field of your heart, when in a state of connectedness and coherence of love, is 10 times greater than that of your thought field? This remarkable truth underscores the transformative potential of actualizing the higher dimensions of your heart centers over and above your best positive affirmations and good intentions. Moreover, it proves that love is also 10 times more powerful than negative and destructive thoughts, thereby offering the obvious solution to our turmoil. As we navigate the complexities of our world and emergent technologies, let us not lose sight of our true human spirit, the love 
that defines us. Activating love within for ourselves and others becomes paramount. Each of you, by actualizing and embodying your greater potential through the self-sustainability process, can and must and will become the greatest catalyst for change. Peace in our time is possible. You as individuals hold the power to create a quantum level impact. By embracing the seven quantum keys into your lives, organizations, schools, and businesses, you unlock the potential for inner peace and sustainability for all. Because this knowledge, knowledge, excuse me, this knowledge once internalized becomes a profound and powerful tool for helping not just yourself, but your families, your friends, your colleagues, your teams, your customers, and your communities to transform their lives from the inside out. You as change makers have the potential to create a ripple effect that transcends individual transformation. You will have a quantum impact. And just to wrap up, peace in our time is possible. Imagine the collective power we could harness by uniting with 10 times more strength rooted in the core of each of our being. As leaders, pioneers, and people of influence, the challenge and the choice lie before you. The challenge is to recognize that without a foundation of pure and unconditional self-sustaining self-love, our actions, decisions, and intentions will continue to perpetuate global disaster driven by greedy, lustful, love-lacking ego, and further undermine our evolution by cutting the very branch upon which we sit. Without the foundation of compassion and consciousness, what we've built must inevitably fall back down. Peace is possible in our time, and I urge you, good people and beautiful souls of Karachi, to be leaders in this endeavor, to embrace the choice before you and do something that no other nation has done before, and that is to become self-sustainable as individuals for the overall sustainability and well-being of humanity and our beloved Earth. Make peace with yourself. Resolve the ancestral trauma. Evolve from your conditioning and be in peace for your family and for your country and fast. Make it part of your corporate social responsibility and prioritize self-sustainable development goals into your model for growth and well-being. Plan for peace. Profit from peace. Peace in our time is possible. And in conclusion, I leave you with this undeniable truth. Peace starts now. Your peace starts now. And let's choose peace in our time. The missing peace is within reach, and your decision to embrace it will not only be life-changing, but dare I say, world-changing. Peace in our time. Who's with me in this room for peace in our time? Can I see, can I see your hands? If you are here, Karachi, for peace in our time, you want peace in our time, you believe in peace in our time, you want peace in our time for your children and your grandchildren, let me hear you say it. Peace in our time. Peace in our time. Let your children hear you. Blessings. Thank you. I love you.